Many people are confused as to how service companies generate revenue. I was one of those people. Also, at the start of my internship, I was floored to find out that my measly $10.50 wage, that part of it was paid for by the president of Egypt. Now, many of you may be very confused by that statement. So we're going to take a deeper dive into the Glover Park Group, know what it um, does on a daily basis, and figure out how this statement plays into a problem that the Glover Park Group should address. So welcome to a little part of the Glover Park Group. We will go through the government affairs side and the strategic communication side of this firm. Now these are not the only sectors of the Glover Park Group, but they are the most prominent. Then I will address who the audience for this problem is. After I address this problem, I will look to alternatives. From the alternatives, we will make a decision, we will implement that decision, and then we will learn from it. Then we will have our conclusion. So what is the Glover Park Group? This is actually a very good question. The CEO did an ex a little um, experiment on this actually when I first started. He created an entire video running around the company asking associates, what is GPG? Now people who are very invested in the strategic communication side could not articulate what the government affairs side does and vice versa. Also people on the branding side or the creative side. So GPG is a full service public affairs, crisis communications, government relations, branding, creative, and research firm. So there's a lot going on. And not only is that a mouthful, but it's a lot to deal with on a daily basis. I know for me as an intern, I would be working on health and services things in the morning and then working on foreign government work in the afternoon. Everything was very intertwined and there was no set, this is strategic communications or this is government relations. It really showed how business is intertwined and that um, things are very interrelated. So it's important to be knowledgeable in all aspects. So in order to better serve our client base, which includes Fortune 500, nonprofit, and foreign government clients, I had to be able to understand all of these different projects that we were working on. Some of the projects that I worked on were in the government affairs sector. So what does government affairs um, encompass? First off, it encompasses international affairs. So one part of that is global health and development. This is where we help NGOs, non-government organizations, with um, overseas implementation of education and new programs. Large charities were some of the clients that the Glover Park Group helped out in this um, sphere. Also, another part is foreign governments and corporations. These are um, actual countries that the Glover Park Group helps through difficult times. Another part would be tech and telecom, health and wellness, which includes um, health insurance agencies, also large hospitals. With, um, the in with Obamacare, this has become a very big client for the firm. Also, energy and sustainability, as well as generalist. Another sector that I worked in was strategic communications. So what does strategic communications include? There, were some, there is some overlapping between strategic communications and government relations, but there are some stark differences as well. In strategic communications, they obviously deal with communications, media, and technology. They deal with education. They deal with energy and sustainability, like the government affairs side. They deal with entertainment. This could be movie releases or book releases. Um, they deal with financial services, helping homeowner associations. Um, covering events on the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee. They also help with health and wellness, and they help with generalists as well. So who is the audience for the problem that I'm addressing? The audience varies from the government affairs sector. They work on the International Affairs Division, and they work with foreign governments and corporations. Some of the People who have the most influence in this sector are Managing Director Joel Johnson, Managing Director Alex Mystery, 
Vice President Joshua Gross, and also some team support as in Jennifer Flieger and Jessica Mulligan. These people work intensely on the Egypt team and have a large say in what the company invests its time in. So what is the problem? The problem are clients that could potentially harm the company's image. The part of the Glober Park is to help companies with crisis situations. And one thing that we definitely do not want to get ourselves into is our own crisis situation. There was a report um, released by Corporate Europe that addressed European firms that were helping um, countries who had bad track records in human rights and war crimes. Um, this even goes all the way back to Hitler where he had a European firm that was helping him um, further his campaign and further all of the wrongs that he was committing. So obviously this is a big concern and not one that um, the Glover Park Group wants to get itself into. Um, in the firm it addresses PR professionals are working for some of the most autocratic regimes and human rights abusers. Some examples would be Russia. There's European PR firms that are helping um, Putin and Kremlin um, sound not as autocratic and um, help them further their campaigns. In Rwanda, they're helping rebranding despite its um, bad history with war crimes and repression. Um, also in Bangladesh, they're seeking support, although that executions have been very prevalent in the country. There are 18 firms, um, 18 countries that were addressed, and they addressed multiple firms that were part of this, um, part of the efforts to help these countries. Now, thankfully, the Glover Park Group was not included in the 18 countries addressed, but they were included, they did have a slight mention in the report. So, how the Glover Park Group came up was that it's work with General Sisi of Egypt. Um, General Sisi, um, his rise to power has been um, a little bit controversial. He is um, leading a backlash against dissenters and the Glover Park Group is helping him um, increase economic development. That is the goal of the Glover Park Group, it's to help Egypt with economic development and um, they do obviously do not support, um, support uh, human rights abuses and their effort is to help with economic development. So it's important to first define what their goal is. So what's an alternative that the Glover Park Group could do? Well, one thing that they could do is they could drop the client altogether. Uh, this would you know, largely minimize their international affairs um, division. It would largely, it would um, make the work for the Egypt team obviously obsolete and um, it would probably not be able to employ as many employees. In addition, they would lose $250,000 a month. That is the um, payment that Egypt gives to the Glover Park Group to help them with strategy and that is something that they would lose. Another alternative would be to keep the client and utilize proactive strategies to ensure that the Glover Park Group was not on the corporate Europe list um, for the next year. So that means that they would retain about $250,000 a month. That would be about $3 million a year, and they would have the ability to help foreign governments. Now, obviously, taking this on would be a heavy lift, and they would need to be very knowledgeable about the other offenses that other PR firms have so they do not fall into that trap. So given those two alternatives, I believe the best solution would be to pick alternative two. Not only would they retain the funds from the um, journal CC, but they would also prove that they are able to deal with this um, very complex and um, sticky situation and that they're still able to do it ethically and do it in a way that furthers um, other opportunities with other governments. So how are they going to implement this? Um, 
corporate Europe actually gave a, um, a couple suggestions in order to make sure that PR practices were ethical. One thing would be monitoring. Um, the company needs to take a very proactive approach and make sure that everything they do, they are monitoring. They also, that also means they are monitoring all news um, coming out of Egypt. I know um, it was a practice at the Grover Park Group to do weekly clippings of all news in Egypt so that we are well aware of what's going on. If there are human rights abuses going on, we are proactive, we address that with the client, and we say, you know, we're here to help um, with economic development reform. Egypt has done well in that respect. They just had um, an economic development conference last month that went very well, um, brought U.S. Um, involvement in, for, in forms of large companies. In the past um, year, a hundred of U.S.'s largest companies have visited Egypt and expressed interest in investing in the country. So that is a very positive thing, but even with those positives, the Glover Park Group wants to address the negatives as well because we want this relationship to continue to be positive and we don't want it to be brought down by negatives. So like I said, we do weekly clippings of what's going on in Egypt and even um, part of our role is even when the news is upsetting, even when um, everything isn't going well, that we still address that as well. Um, also, we need to be able to build up the capabilities of the embassy. Like I said, the Glover Park Group deals with many organizations that have um, crisis situations. This is, you know, in all sectors. And ultimately, our goal, we want to help them through this, but ultimately we want to empower them to be able to work if a situation like this arrives again, that they can work through it on their own. That is um, the goal. We want to give them communications uh, strategies and further um, proactive strategies so that if something were to arise that they could um, address it on their own. Also, we need to make the work public. This could be a very controversial subject as you know there was a whole report written on PR firms who are helping foreign governments. So we need to make sure everything is very clear and the PR firm, a lot of people you know, like to make things very vague, um, but in order to show that we have nothing to hide, we need to make work public. This would also um, follow the guidelines of FARA, which is another thing that um, Glover Park Group needs to address. The FARA is the U.S. Foreign Agents Registration Act, and that is um, part of U.S. law. It is not a part of European law, and that's one of the um, suggestions that the report made. Um, in or for these European PR firms to implement a simple, uh, a similar act to the FARA Act. So what does the FARA Act ask? It asks that all lobbyists and lawyers representing the interest of foreign governments to be registered and that this register can be consulted online. So obviously that it's very open, that people looking for the information are able to see it. And also we need to make our goals clear. Like I stated before, the goal of the Glover Park Group is to increase um, Egyptian economic development. As I said, their economic forum last month um, showed that we were successful in that. Also, we need to m help them marry with um, congressmen and sen senators that would pull for U.S. involvement in Egypt. Currently, um, you know, the Americans are not, not as um, willing to invest due to previous sanctions and previous um, Egyptian human rights abuses. So the Egyptian government needs to, under needs to realize how they can um, get in contact with congressmen and senators in order to poll for American involvement in their country. So we need to make that goal clear, not only with America, but we also need to make it clear with our client. Um, you know, unfortunately, there, there were human rights abuses that occurred in Egypt. There are still um, efforts that need to be made. Um, as you know, one thing that they try to highlight is that their Amer American values in forms of um, in form of economics. That you know, this economic development they're trying to um, mirror American values in that. But one criticism is, are they mirroring American values um, with democracy? 
So we need to make sure that our goals with our client are very clear, that we will further the economic development, but that doesn't mean that we're going to turn a blind eye to human rights abuses. So learn. Um, after this, we will learn what did we do well. Um, one thing that we have found that has been uh, very helpful is the clippings. Also going to events from, you know, the Middle East Institute or other um, other hearings to see both sides of the story. We don't only want to hear the news from our client because we acknowledge that this could be biased news. So we want to get our news from various sources and be able to implement the best strategy from there. Also, where do we need to improve? Should we have been stricter on human rights abuses that they committed? Um, should we set guidelines for um, if you know so, so many X number of events happened that we cut our services? And then overall, how can we ethically help similar clients in the future? Um, I know that Egypt was a big client that the Boulder Park Group first started off with, and afterwards, I know that we are now working with other countries that are trying to better their situations, you know, increase, um, improve their economies, and you know, decrease human rights abuses. Okay, so in conclusion. We have we had the government affairs overview. That is where our problems stemmed from, um, from the international affairs sector um, with foreign governments. So while there are, it can get muddy very quickly because there are many sectors in this company. Um, it's important to pinpoint one place that they can improve, and one place that they could improve was in the government affairs side of the company. Um, the Glover Park Group does many things well, so it was um, a little difficult to find something that they could improve on, but this was one that I believe they could. Also, the strategic communications over you talk about um, all the different sectors that um, strategic communications overlies in this. You know, like I said, some areas um, are both in strategic communications and government affairs. This is even true for Egypt. There, you know, some uh, communications efforts, some press lists fell under the strategic communication side, but um, they also they went to a government affairs client. So also the audience. It's important to address the people that really make the decisions. If it comes from the top, it really speaks volumes. So I believe having you know, two managing directors and a vice president who are deeply involved in this, if they understand the risks, if they understand um, the other problems that other firms have faced and the mistakes that they have made, that we can learn from them. And then we talked about, we use Paddle to define the problem, define alternatives, make our decision, implement it, and learn from it. And um, in this internship, I learned that um, it's very important for, the reason why I choose Paddle is because I feel like it was very strategy driven. At the Glover Park Group, everything is strategy driven, actually. Um, Alex Mystery, who is one of the managing directors on this account, uh, one of his quotes that he works by is, if I were given 60 minutes to solve a problem, I would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and five minutes um, implementing it. So I think it's very important to show you really need to do all of the back work. You really need to, um, you know, go into multiple news sources. You need to find information from a variety of places, and that's something that I learned um, in my internship. Um, you know, I made a habit of looking at the major newspapers. I made a habit of not just believing everything I heard, but making sure that it was backed up. And I think in the business world, it's very important, especially. Uh, as a woman who sometimes things are not taken as seriously, to always have a reason behind what I'm doing, to back it up by fact. And um, I think that's very important. That will definitely stick with me throughout my business career. And um, it really also showed how intertwined everything is. Um, you know, there are many clients at the Glover Park Group, there are many sectors that the Glover Park Group covers. 
know, I really believe it's strategy in all sectors. And it's really important to see how all this is intertwined. Um, the real world is not as broken up as, you know, all of the majors. It's important to have that technical experience, but it's also important to realize how they all play into each other. Um, so that is my problem that I addressed at the Boulder Park Group and all of the lessons I learned from this great internship. And at this time,